let's uh, get to the next session from Odit about uh, exposing PCI te technologies into virtual machines. Hi, so hi everyone. I'm Odit. I'm uh, working uh, at. Oh, did you turn it on? Oh, there's a switch on the. Back back. We can hear you, but the people online maybe not. Here? So we yeah. can hear? Okay, no, it's fine. Thanks. Okay, so my name is Oded. I'm working at Habana Labs, which is an Intel company. We're developing uh, deep learning accelerators. And I'm the kernel maintainer of the Linux driver. So I'm here to talk to you today about uh, the problem that the kernel today doesn't support doing a PCI peer-to-peer -peer inside a virtual machine. Um, so basically, when we want to do peer-to-peer -peer between two PCI devices, the kernel needs to validate that those PCI devices can actually do peer-to-peer. -peer. And today this is done by calling uh, this function inside the kernel, calc map type in this, catchy name, uh, which uh, takes the two peers and runs a series of uh, checks on them to see if those peers can uh, actually talk. And let's see um, what it does. So here I have. Sorry, could, could you full screen the presentation oh, yeah. while you're doing it? Is that possible? Yeah, just a second. No, so three, three dots, no, no, two dots. Okay. okay. No, 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 below, below, below. And it's the probably of his life. Oh, yeah. yes, that's it. Yes, in the future. Thank you. Oh, okay. So this is a. Uh, uh, an example of a configuration of a server with uh, eight accelerators and uh, four uh, RDMA, Rocky Mix, that uh, is used for doing uh, deep learning uh, topologies. So uh, we have here, we have here uh, uh, the accelerators that uh, do, does the computation, and then the NICs are used to distribute, to distribute the results of the computation around the cluster. Uh, this is used for something we call the scale out and the classic example of the flow of data is that the CPU, uh, the accelerator is using its DMA to get data into its uh, device memory. You do some computation on it and then the NIC takes that data and, and then the compute accelerator copies the data back to the memory of the CPU. And then the NIC takes that data from that memory and sends it over the Ethernet. And when doing peer-to-peer, -peer, instead of doing this copy back of the results to the memory of the CPU, and the NIC directly access the on-device memory of the compute accelerator and reads the data from there and sends it over the, net, the Ethernet network. And on the receiving side, the NIC will write the data directly into the memory of the compute accelerator. So this is basically peer-to-peer. -peer. And there are a couple of uh, scenarios where peer-to-peer -peer can be done. So this function uh, checks that those scenarios are uh, valid. So for instance, the first thing it wants to check is that if these devices so are behind the same PCI switch, then uh, it will check that the PCI switch uh, has its ACS peer-to-peer -peer forwarding disabled. This is a feature uh, that is part of the PCI spec that will cause all peer-to-peer -peer traffic to be uh, forwarded to the root complex. So if they are behind the same switch and that feature is disabled, then that function says, okay, we can do peer-to-peer -peer between the two devices. Alternatively, if they are behind the same switch, but this feature is enabled, then it will go and check the root complex to see if that root complex is whitelisted. So we have in the kernel a hard-coded list of PCI switches that we know can handle peer-to-peer -peer traffic, and it just checks the vendor and device ID versus that list. If it's whitelisted, then it says 
you can do peer-to-peer. -peer. If it's not, it returns an error. Uh, by the way, for if you're using AMD systems, then it will check the CPU type and not the PCI switch and not the root complex type. So um, after we said that, to summarize, uh, we can summarize what this function requires. It requires the to know the PCI topology. It requires to know the ACS configuration of the relevant PCI switches. And it requires to know the type of the PCI root complex or the CPU. And the problem is, is that all this information is not exposed inside the DSOS. So um, for root complex type, QMU emulates only old root ports. Uh, for the PCI topology is defined by the user. Uh, it does not reflect uh, the real PCI topology. Um, in all the cases I've seen in cloud service providers, it has no relationship to the real PCI topology. And the ACS configuration of the PCI switches is, is not exposed because the PCI switches themselves are not replicated inside the DSS. So this function is totally broken inside the DSS. So I have here uh, three proposals uh, on how to try and solve this issue. Um, the first proposal is to replicate the PCI topology. Uh, and I will first say that this, this is not my preferred proposal, but uh, a lot of people ask me why not to do it. So I decided uh, that uh, to present this proposal anyway. So I try to think how, how to do it most efficiently. And uh, what I have uh, thought about is to emulate, to have two new emulated devices. One will emulate the PCI root port, let's call it PCI root port P2P, and the other will emulate the PCI switch. So we have here a simplified diagram with all the PCI BDF addresses. And you can see that the, the basically the change that uh, the user will need to do in this configuration is that if he wants to use peer-to-peer, -peer, then when he passes this information to the QEMU, he will have also to pass the matching host BDF devices. So the QEMU will know uh, uh, what information to take and what validations to do uh, when it sets up the VM. Why? Because, for example, uh, when he defines the PCI root port as a peer-to-peer -peer PCI root port, we want to know that this that in the host machine we have a whitelisted PCI root port, because otherwise the peer-to-peer -peer won't be won't be enabled. So unmute, please. <laughs> okay. Um, does that? I don't know. I can. I can. Yes. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, I I think, think I'm right. Um. So in 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 general, like as a, as a basic rule of thumb in in QMU, we don't avoid you shooting yourself in your foot. Um. So I'm I'm not quite sure why you would necessarily do any sanity checks at all. So the typical path you would take in in, in the QMU world is that you just say. This is my virtual topology. And then you assign your physical guests in there. And if you, as the person that set up that environment, did that wrong, then well, it is going to implode. Yeah, sure. But it's you who did it wrong. If you if you if you're going through these super advanced topology configurations in QMU, you need to know a lot about your, your host topology anyways. Yeah. So you may as well infer that you have found found out how exactly your topology works. And the the idea then would be that. The entity that collects all of the information would be a higher level management stack, such as Libvirt, that is able to enumerate that using, for example, SysFS. So you would expose using SysFS that, hey, I, I have ACS enabled here. I, I am able to uh, go and and uh, create a, um, a, a I, I do know what peer-to-peer -peer traffic is, and I can I can this device can actually do that with that device. And then that management stack goes and creates a compatible topology in the guest. And the compatible topology doesn't have to be the same. It just needs to be compatible. But I wouldn't map it to whatever the host does at all. OK, so yeah, I thought that if we're going through this proposal, and like I said, it is not my preferred proposal, 
I'll show you the next one. But if we're going through, I thought that it's better to also validate it and not just let the user, like, basically, you can say trick the guest OS into thinking that it can do peer-to-peer, -peer, but I get your point. Um, that's also um, a valid way, I guess. It's not just, it's, it's just only, um, yeah, it's not just only about tricking. Um, it's also that maybe you want to have the exact same uh, uh, topology with P2P DMA for virtualized devices. What if you have a virtualized RDMA device and a virtualized whatever PV GPU and you want your RDMA textures into your PV GPU? I don't know, whatever. Um, completely contract example. But uh, there is a, there, there's a good chance that you want to have a fully virtualized environment that also has uh, peer to peer DMA capabilities. Yeah, I see. Okay. I, I'm not ruling it out. We can discuss it later, but again, I, I, I'll talk about the next proposals and maybe we, we can decide actually to do them and not this because... So just to summarize here, um, um, so basically this, uh, you asked me uh, why to mention the host behalf. So another thing is that I wanted to replicate the ACS configuration, for example. So in your case, you're saying if the user decided to define a PCI switch for peer-to-peer, -peer, then we will configure it to have its ACS disabled, regardless if the, in, in the host it's disabled or not. Uh, so the, yeah. the, the, yes, um, the, the, the basic train of thought is very simple. It's for, from the guest point of view, it doesn't matter whether you have a device behind the virtual switch, and then behind that virtual switch, it just happens to, um, uh, to have two devices that are able to do peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, but on the host, it may as well be a much more complex topology. It may be ACS disabled, and then you, conf you, you do actual peer-to-peer -peer between, I don't know, yet, yet another completely like root port attached device and another one that is behind the switch, which is compatible. But, um, but, but because you already did set up all of, the, um, all of your windows correctly and all of your, your transactions uh, correctly on, on the host, you do know that you can do a much more simple, simplified uh, setup in, in the guest on, on a virtual topology. And that's why I would completely disconnect the two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, um, so... Mute again, please. Yeah. So if we want to validate it, uh, if we don't want to validate it, that's great. But yeah, regardless, actually, regardless if we want to validate it or not, we will need to um, add this new PCI to PCI peer-to-peer -peer root port to the whitelist, so uh, the guest OS uh, will find this root port type as a whitelisted. Um, and I wrote here to export this whitelist to user API file, but that's only if we need to validate it. Um, so the pros of this approach is that this requires minimal changes to the kernel code, very minimal, if, if at all. Uh, the cons, in my opinion, are this will require a modification of existing VM configurations for peer-to-peer -peer setups. Um, I don't know how uh, long that will take and how willing our cloud service providers to do that and validate that, but uh, in my opinion, it's, it's uh, not a minor cost. Um, and if we go to the approach that I presented that the guest topology should be the same as the host topology, then it might be kind of a security leak information. Excuse me, can, can you turn on the microphone again? I think there is was muted. see if it's okay you know what yes thank you fair, 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 fair. i'll take this one um I, I was saying i um a big veto from my side because it's it's um violating almost every layer we have uh where it combines uh device specific functionality with virtualization particular um, implementation details so we, we we shouldn't have a kvm hypercall that is handled in KVM code, especially. Uh, 
um, that uh, allows you to enumerate what, what device capabilities there are. It's, just, it's going to break a lot of assumptions. TCG is going to break um, uh, users mm -hmm. of, say again? Oh, that's me. Oh, uh, users of um, of of uh, VFIO that uh, are not using um, KVM also probably want to have P2P DMA. So anything that is um, related to up uh, bar mappings uh, correctly, so you can actually DMA into each other's bars. Um, all of these pieces need to be available to just generic VFIO users in addition to virtualization. You, you you cannot tie it into KVM. Okay. Um, okay. That, doesn't, that, that doesn't include a hypercall. Yeah. It, okay. The, the 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 comment was that doesn't include a hypercall. In in theory, it doesn't. In practice, there's a bunch of heavy lifting that you would need to do in order to expose hypercalls into user space because currently KVM doesn't do that at all. KVM uh, terminates hypercalls always in kernel space. Yeah, but I'm also talking about kernel space. I'm not talking about user space here. Yes, and that's exactly the problem. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because the, problem is... the calculation is done inside the guest OS kernel. So... Oh, sorry, the host kernel. Sorry? In the host kernel. KVM hypercalls are turned in the host kernel. Yes, and we can... And, and, so and the, host, saying... the host kernel has, has, like, should not have any say in guest topology. Guest topology is a user space owned piece of information in a KVM world. Yeah, well, usually in peer-to-peer -peer situations, at least in situations like I showed where you have a full box with all these accelerators, like you have a single guest on the machine, it has all the devices anyway. So I'm not seeing this distinction as strongly as you are, I guess. Because you don't want to do scale out. If you don't have the entire box anyway, it's it's just, it's, it's, it's just about philosophical concepts of, of the way um, the, we do the layering in, in, in the KVM KMU world, and and that is that is just breaking them, and it, it's going to set a precedence that is going to just make make that whole architecture fall apart. Either way, I think the first approach was actually fine as long as you remove the host equals part. Mm -hmm. But that should work uh, perfectly okay. I, I'm what I'm what I'm interested in is is missing is the other pieces that are much more complicated. It's um, enumerating whether uh, P2P DMA is capable from user space because you have to have some way to transmit that information into user space. And the other part that is missing user space is space of the guest or the host. Host, host user space needs to somehow understand. I have these two devices here. Can they talk to each other? How can they talk to each other? Can I establish a link between them? And how can I establish that link between them? And but when do you want to know this information? What stage? You want to know that stage when assembling that command line. To the QMU? Yes. But didn't you just said that we don't want to, like, the user, the, the person Q that defined the VM already knows what is the box. He knows if he can do that because these are complex ah, scenarios. Um, so No, I, I, want, I want a tool that executes QMU to illuminate the hardware and assemble the command line based on that. Okay. I want to tell, I want to say, I want to have these two devices attached into a guest using P2P DMA. Okay, okay. And now then I your tool should find out all the rest of how to do it and tell you yes or no. Okay, I understand. Yes. It's, it gets a lot more complicated because the, the current situation is we have the subsystem in the kernel called PCI P2P DMA that has the calc calculation we've been talking about. And anything that uses that is not going to work in a VM. However, VFIO doesn't use it. So VFIO quite happily plugs in broken P2P configurations into VMs or working ones or whatever. So looking forward, I would like, well, IOM and UFD to call the calc function, right? Yes. So, right, so it will call the calc function and that means QMU will not, will, will fail the IOMMU mapping somehow. And I, I don't exactly know how this is going to work, but that's kind of the, what's in my head right now is you you will not be able to get a peer-to-peer -peer mapping set up in your IOMMU if the calc function says you're not allowed to do it, which means that QMU has already kind of discovered that it's got a problem because it's gone and created a mapping, it's tried to put things in it, and it's got a hole in that mapping. So should QMU just leave an unmapped section and run the guest if that's what it's been asked to do, or should it should it build topologies? I don't I don't know. But it does have and could have the information. 
we need to think about compatibility. Oh, well, that's Alex. He's on the phone. Oh, Alex. Oh. Hey, sure. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Qumi so, could know that information, but we have historically been allowing it regardless of whether it works. So, um, Qumi could know that it failed and decide whether or not that's a critical failure path or not. But um, how do we make it work with existing QMU? Um, OK. Uh, making peer-to-peer -peer DM, are you hearing me, hearing me again? Yeah, we hear you. Well, just because we hear uh, the mic doesn't mean the, yep, you're good. Is, is it on again? OK, you're very good. good. Um, I just don't see see it on the screen here. Uh, the Q QMU. How, how does peer-to-peer -peer DMA work today in QMU at all? Given that usually, if you want to do peer-to-peer -peer DMA, you would DMA into a bar region of another device. How does the guest know that it is the same? Like, like how how do you even? Okay, sure. <laughs> So it works today because in a QMU environment, it always goes through the IO image. So we need to have the switches with ACS turned on and, and all those other features. And the QMU uses VFIO to plug in the bar mappings into the IO MMU. And, and this is another sore spot where it uses the follow PFN security breach problem path to do that. So it, it directly extracts. Like So the, the flow is, VFIO PCI will M map the bar space into QMU, which will then stick it into KVM. Then it will map that bar space into the IO MMU using follow PFN to, to discover it. And then from the guest perspective, it's got a chunk of KVM memory that's, that one to one matches the IO MMU map that points to the bar. And because we have ACS turned on, all the transactions go through the host. And so they go through the IO MMU translation, and everybody's, everybody's happy. So it's not Really peer to peer, you're still punching. Uh, the okay, so that's a configuration, okay? And then, so to make this all actually useful, yeah. we have to bypass the ATS. Yeah. So to sure. bypass the ATS, the, you need to go and have the, the preferred approach is to use ATS. Yeah. So we use ATS on the initiator, and then we issue an ATS translated transaction on PCI, which bypasses the ATS violation, the, the ATS enforcement on the switch because it's already been translated. So the first transaction will always go to the host bridge, will get translated, and then using the ATS, you will cache that translation, and the next transaction will go with the translated address. And then if your ACS configuration is turned off, then it will do actual peer-to-peer -peer without going into the host bridge again. So the whole, <laughs> the whole thing is an incredible, painful mess is the answer. Oh, just, uh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around um, how you have completely. <laughs> we can also use two mics, don't we? Two. Um, we, we, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, we, just, we just go to the back of the room. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, the thing I'm trying to wrap my head around is, is um, how all of that works with fully virtualized, like with a completely different address space map, um, if you don't do translations, but you're basically saying you always do translations, which means you have to do ATS. Yes. Um, at which point you have a super big security breach because ATS basically means you have to trust your hardware all, to, all, all together because your well, hardware. You always have to trust the hardware. Right? No, not if you if you use an IOMU. No, no, no. What, PCI defines that special ATS pass where you can set the translation not required bit yes. and all the switches forward it directly. That's baked into PCI. Oh, geez. There, there okay. is no, there is no trust the hardware here, right? Okay, okay. You, you always have to trust the hardware. You have to trust the hardware to issue the TLPs with the correct RID, right? We, we trust yes. the hardware in this model. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. fair. And, and, and like I said, the, the, the classic configuration is that the, the guest OS has all the devices in the, in the system. It's like, I don't see, like, you can do peer-to-peer -peer if you divide it into multiple guests, but that's just not cost-effective, I guess, for anyone to do. Like, so, you first do scale-up inside the box, and then you will do scale-out to multiple boxes. So there, you didn't have another proposal here. The, yeah, the, the I, had, I, had, I had another, yeah, I had another slide, so instead oh, of... Oh, doing... well, I, I was going to say the simple version ah, is okay. we just add a kernel command line that says peer-to-peer -peer works, and the calc... <laughs> thingamajig that we're talking about just says true, right? That's, <laughs> that's, 
that's like the simple solution here because as Oded has said a couple times, the number of people that actually need this is a teensy bit Agreed. small. Um, and it would be very easy for QMU to even even push that. So you're basically right? saying if they're going to point the gun at the toe, let them shoot it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a thought. I mean, the 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 building the PCI switches is similar, and we've done yeah. things like that before. But um, the, the the current situation is all the people doing this don't call Kelk in the first place. Correct. Right? So, uh, <laughs> you know. The, yeah, yeah. So that's that's how we do it today. <laughs> we just don't call the function. Just, we just don't call yeah. the function, right? Yeah, yeah but, but so. that only works if you use DMA buff. If you use P2P DMA, then like for with a file system, a device, then you can do it because it's inside the kernel. It's not in your device driver. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the goal from the kernel perspective is we want everybody to call the function. Like I said, we want VFIO to call the function. We want we want all the DRM drivers. We want everybody to call the function because it exists for a good reason. Um, but we still need it to make it doesn't work in VMs. So. And I guess um, the question I, is how I, have a, I, I had a last proposal, which is similar to the hypercall, but instead of a hypercall, define a VirtIO device that the guest can inquire, and then the host will do the calculation. So instead of a hypercall, do a VirtIO device that basically does that. I don't know if that's more acceptable or less acceptable. It certainly goes to user space, which is better than, than terminating in kernel. Um, and then we will, in this solution, we will need, because it goes to the user space, we will need to expose this calc map type and this function as some kind of a user API for the QMU to figure out if the two devices can do peer to peer. I know if it's fun, it's, if, if, it's better than, okay. than layering terms. If, if we just go back to the first proposal and you have QMU say, I want to do peer to peer between this device and that device. If you create, if you, and if you, are, if you have that knowledge, and you can then just tell IOMU of the, I want to do peer to peer DMA between these two devices, please do that now. And it tells you, no, I can't. Then you have a message from the user that says, I want to do the peer to peer DMA. You have IOMU of D that tells you, no, I can't. And then you can fail. And then you don't break any ABIs or any, any uh, contracts that you but have. But in before. the first proposal, even if you know the user will tell us, we will need to expose to the guest some kind of topology that will pass the calc map type in this function, right? We will need to, to set it up correctly. You, yes, and, and the VFIO PCI device node can find that out because it is a downstream of peer-to-peer -peer enabled devices. So that gives you the hint that says, I want to do peer-to-peer -peer DMA. And then VFIO PCI finds that out and automatically makes sure that all the mappings are configured for peer-to-peer -peer DMA enabled. And if that doesn't work, then tough luck. Yeah, I mean, it sounds it sounds simple, fail. right? You, you just need to put a PCI switch in and turn on ACS, and then yeah, it'll pass real. the test, yeah, right? So, yeah. so yeah. just just have QMU make a PCI switch and turn yes. off ACS. Yes, yeah, that's, yes that that's what I said. That's yes. it, yeah, what he said. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's kind of like a combination of one and two, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, I guess we can talk about it later more. Yeah, it's a, it's a lively discussion, so... <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> unfortunately, time is up. Okay. Maybe we, you, you can continue later in one of the meeting rooms. Yeah. Okay. So the next session Thank is. You.